Welcome back, my duelist friends, Casual Duelist here, and today we are concluding all of our three times builds for this year's 2024 two-player starter set for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Advanced format. And um, so we've already done Player S, we've played uh, Player X, both at three times. Let's put it all together, let's do the song and dance with all the players now, right? So, quick, let's just get into it. Um... The first thing that we're going to do is, I want to say this was 41, might be a 40 card build. Um, it's real close. Um, we're going to have three copies, Barrier Resonator, number one, Light, two, Fiend, three, Tuner, four. For a discard on a quick effect, our Tuner takes uh, does not die from uh, combat during the turn that we activate the effect, and we take no battle damage involving any of those combats. So, good card, great card. Second, Chiron the Mage. Optional breaker once per turn. Discard a spell card. Target a spell trap on the opponent's side of the field. Pop it. A um, couple things that make him great. He's off type. He's off attribute. So, when we go for the Vicious Starfrost play, we can out him after getting his effect. Uh, plus Resonator. That's already on table. Plus Barrier. Equals five for Stygian. And uh, keeps him moving, plus gets into our rank four plays. So good card, great card. Next card, three copies, Cyber Dragon. Important, it's the start summon. Um, it is the special summon if the opponent has something. Um, it is off type, but not off attribute. However, it is light. So through the modification magic of the Star Changer, we can go ahead and we can drop him to four, go into a rank four play, or we can use him as the leftover four stars if we have this a star frost. Um, so again, very good there. Plus resonator equals six for coral dragon, which immediately gets us to where we just need a four star light. Um, so again, very cool. And lots of plays that could be done. Um, every, it's just about every monster is triplicate. Almost every card is triplicate today. Um, three Dark Resonators, again, uh, rank three plays, we can level him up to a rank four for rank four plays. Um, we can modulate his level or Cyber Dragon's level to go into a seven star synchro play. Um, we can just take him plus other cards, uh, like him plus Chiron plus level modulation either, again, is either rank four, uh, could be sync seven, could be sync six, depending on what you need, and has the interplay with the Barrier Resonator to make sure that it's not just the two attacks he can take in the turn before he pops, but all the attacks. So again, good stuff, great stuff. Next up, we've got Mongu. And again, anytime you see a four-star in this deck, just remember, because Resonator exists, uh, either one, honestly, we can go to five, or we can go to seven in this instance, or again, we can modulate, we can go into a rank 4, we can go into a rank 3, we can go into a sync 6. Um, lots of cool plays. Mongo again, going to take everybody but himself and lower them by 500. And then once per turn, we can go ahead and destroy all monsters on the field, currently at a lower attack value than Mongo. Um, and again, the effect of Mongo's do stack if you have multiple copies of this Tiger Boy in play. So again, just... I'm trying to keep it above uh, above the level here. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, next up, one of the big pieces to the deck. Three copies of Vanadium Fearless. Again, if you control Starfrost or another monster that's 15 by 21. Again, I'm not sure what archetype that is. Um, we don't. I don't have any of them. Uh, you could special summon this from the hand. I only do that once per turn. Additionally, if it gets destroyed by battle or card effect, you may special summon one copy of Manadium Fearless from the deck. And during the battle phase, all synchro monsters that you control would gain an extra 500. Um, so again, it does help replenish itself, which helps us get to our big boy, the Prime Heart. Um, just by simply putting a bunch of tuners on board. And then last but not least for the monster, Starfrost. Uh, again, if this is in your hand, you can target a monster that you control with a different type and attribute than this card. Destroy that to special summon this. Uh, use that effect only once per turn. And when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you gain attack equal to half the original attack or defense of the destroyed monster, whichever one's highest. And again, 
if they're tied, you do get the choice. But again, it's not going to matter because it's not like you're adding their defense to your defense or their attack to your attack or picking and choosing that way. You're just getting the greater of the two values. Um, so it is what it is. Um, again, lots of interplay with the Resonators, uh, the Fierce Tiger, Chiron, um, and just a lot of stuff that allows you to board it. And then again, when we're dealing with level modulation, because we are going to be using our uh, copy of that spell card, the Star Changer, you gotta remember, like, this plus Dark Resonator actually equals 10 stars then, because either the Dark Resonator, the Vista Star Frost can go up, uh, three and six becomes uh, either four and six or seven and three. That's your ten stars for your for your uh, Manadium Prime Heart. So again, it, it's like insanely easy to mix and match these two theories um, and just have a whole bunch of routes to your favorite cards. Um, going into the spells, we are going to max out the Book of Moon. Um, obviously, we just want to shut things off. Uh, we want to be able to make sure that we're going to beat stats. Um, you know, Vicious is strong, but he's not always the strongest. Sometimes his attack is going to be better than their defense. Plus, uh, maybe their attack is just fantastic. And we want to add that to him for the next round anyway. Uh, so again, three of those. Three Dark Holes. Again, I'm not sure if this is ban list or not. I filmed this like the day after I got these cards. Um, so like this is like a week later. Um, no, I didn't do my research before I did this. Uh, I'm sorry, but it is a three times challenge. So it's not like I need to normally obey the ban list anyway. Um, but this dark hole is going to let you just go ahead, pop field. So if the opponent had some sort of board, uh, you could try to take it away or possibly press them, uh, for whatever, and then go ahead and build up your side. Same thing with the next thing. We get the three MSTs. Again, this kind of works with the Chiron too. Maybe maybe we can activate it. Maybe we don't need to activate it. Maybe we didn't need the Dark Hole. We needed an MST. For some reason, we didn't draw one. We do that. Whatever you want. Uh, three one-time passcodes. Um, no, you cannot use tokens to Xyz unless they've somehow changed the rules on that, which, again, tokens don't exist in any board state outside of the field. So... I'm pretty sure this just doesn't work. Um, but it does help us solving the last bits of the uh, the synchro plays. Um, and again, this plus this is Star Frost is, again, just immediate prime heart. Uh, three copies of the Star Changer. Again, um, we're not going to be doing anything with Burden of the Mighty, so no cheesy tactic there. Uh, this is literally just to help. This is like the absolute buffer card between the Sync and the Xyz abilities um, that allows you to effortlessly flip back and forth between the two. Uh, traps, we've got four of them. We've got three backs to the front. Uh, you could make the argument that Call of the Haunted would be better. Uh, I'm going to make the argument that I'm not going to let the monster sit around that long. Uh, so it doesn't matter if it's in defense. Uh, the fact is, it's still face up. It's not tied to a continuous card that could be destroyed off something like a quick play MST. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead, I'm going to play the card, I'm going to get rid of the card just to, just about as quick. Um, so that's good. And then just like one copy of No Entry. Again, this should be 40 cards. Uh, give me a second, I'll pause and count. Yeah, I came up with 40. Um, so No Entry was just sort of like my 40th card, it was my toss in. I had a couple of options that it was actually weighing between. Um, and I'll be honest with you, uh, it was really between this and the Storming Mirror Force. And I said, Storming Mirror Force needs an activation timing. And no entry says, flip it and do it. So um, I, I used some old school, uh, ancient duelist technique right there and just went, yeah, I can activate no entry whenever. It might just be to annoy the opponents. Because again, if we do it anytime that's outside of the battle phase, uh, as long as they didn't just play the monsters, they could just simply just move them right back. It's just kind of like, yeah, I'm going to make you move your cards so that you can move your cards again. I'm going to waste five seconds of your day. But on the off chance that you do do this during the battle phase or if the monsters are all normal or special summon this turn, then they're unable to move. So then it's a great play. It's big brain both ways. So real quick, this is the 40 card main deck. Go ahead, take a uh, little pause break, write them down, or go ahead and screen cap uh, or, you know, screenshot 
this image real quick, and I'll see you guys with the extra deck in just a second. All right, hopefully you guys all got that. If not, you know, back up and and try it again, I guess. Um, extra deck, 15 cards. To make everything look right, I actually went ahead and sleeved all of the extra deck this time, not just the synchros. Um, again, a lot of these, I, a lot of, a lot of the, the Xyz I already had, so um, it wasn't that I needed to sleeve them. So I kind of grabbed some older copies of some of them because they were already sleeved. It is what it is. Um, moving through the synchros, we are going to be using two copies of Stygian Sergeants this time. And in fact, we're just going to be going two ups on all the synchros because there's more times that you can synchronize, it feels, than you can Xyz. Um, again, the Stygian Sergeants, it is a Fiend plus non-tuners. Uh, non um, simple, five stars. And we can make it all day, every day with most of this deck. Uh, when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can make this card gain 800 until the end of the battle phase and additionally one more attack. So again, not a bad little dinosaur lizard dude on a motorcycle ever. Uh, next up, two copies Coral Dragon. Six-star Tuner Synchro, which is awesome. Uh, once per turn, discard a card, target a card your opponent controls, destroy it. This is soft once per turn. This is once per turn per copy. The next one, if this is syn if this Synchro Summoned card is sent from Field to Grave, draw one card. This is a hard once per turn effect. So if you are going to stage up off the Synchro, you go with a uh, with whatever you played. You, you played, uh, you know, Cyber Dragon to bury a Resonator. You go into your six off that. Um, create your Coral Dragon, activate the one-time passcode, and uh, sync straight into uh, your big boss, Prime Heart. Um, you get to draw a card while being able to attack once per turn, which is fine, is what it is. It's cool stuff. Um, next up, two copies, Rampaging Smash Tank Rhino Saber. Um, and again, you can discard any... It's, it's, sorry, it's a seven. Um, and once per turn, you can discard any number of cards... Uh, gain 700 attack per card discarded. At the end of the battle phase, if this did attack, you can uh, send it to the graveyard. Special summoning monsters from the graveyard that equal seven stars total. Um, the order is your choice. You just can't play another copy of Rhino Saber this way. Um, and you can play them back from the field. Effects are negated, and each effect is once per turn. So if you needed something like, I don't know, Dark Magician, which did come with this, you could lean a little more towards the normal monsters if you chose. You could play something like Dark Magician here. Um, and then you'd be able to get him. You could go into your magical hats, whatever. Uh, no, it was Thousand Daggers we got, not magical hats. Um, and then you'd be able to kind of like bait your opponent. But it's okay because he doesn't have any effects anyway. He's a normal monster. Um, or you could go ahead and you could play other cards back to see what you can do. Uh, you can also bring back other tuners. Um, and then just go ahead and synchronize into something else. Uh, just as long as the stars equal seven. Uh, last up for the synchros is the Prime Hearts. He's again really cool. We need to take a peek at him. He's 10 stars. He is one or more tuners plus a light monster. Notice the light monster could be a tuner if you choose. It does not say non-tuner. Uh, this gets a number of attacks every battle phase up to the number of tuners used for it. Uh, the most I've been able to do is three. Uh, if this card was sync or summoned using a Manadium Tuner as a material, the opponent may not target it with card effects. If this face-up sync or summon card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card and battle is included, you can special summon one of your monsters that's the 15 by 21 or this is Starfrost. And it doesn't have to be just in the graveyard. It can also be a banished copy. Uh, so again... Sort of brings him back, lets you get into some more tomfoolery, gets you back into that six-star tuner monster. Very cool stuff. Now, we had to streamline the Xyz down a little bit, um, just because we do have more than 16 cards to choose, or more than 15 cards to choose from this time. Um, so first up, we went with two copies of Castell. Uh, still two uh, level four monsters. And again, if you modulated them with the Star Changer spell card, this still allows them to be material afterward. Um, you can detach one material, 
basic uh, Book of Moon as a spell speed one effect, not a quick uh, not a quick effect, or two to target another face up card on the field and uh, shuffle that back into the deck. You get one of these effects once per turn, hard once per turn. Next up, Double Die Gusto Emerald. Uh, two level fours uh, to make this rank four. Once per turn, detach material. Tar uh, activate one of the following. Either target a one non-effect monster in your graveyard and special summon it. Again, if you went the normal route, this could net you something like a uh, Dark Magician or whatever. Rabid Dragon. Your choice. Or you can target three monsters in your graveyard, shuffle all three copy or all three of those back into the deck and draw one. This allows you to, of course, be able to put back the material you just pitched, as well as cards like I don't know, Manadium Fearless, which is going to go flying out of your deck pretty quick. Uh, next up, we got to talk about Divine Arsenal Zeus. Uh, Zeus is normally two twelves the way that we all play it is once an Xyz monster has battled this turn, Xyz summon this using one of your Xyz monsters and their materials as the materials for this card. And uh, then you have the effects. Quick effect, detach two materials from this card, send all other cards from the field to the graveyard. Uh, and then also the uh, second effect, once per turn, if another card or cards you control is destroyed by battle or by an opponent's card effect, you may attach one card from the hand deck or extra deck to this as material. Now, this isn't going to be as cheesy as it was last time, because last time we were just playing Xyz, uh, and we were able to use this effect up to three times without affecting anything by using the Giga Brilliant. Um, this time, we're only using one copy of Giga Brilliant, but he's super playable this time, guys, because... He is a rank 3. He is any two level 3s. While just the fact that we have Dark Resonator in here at 3, and what, how many 4s do we have? We've got 3 Chirons, so that's that's another 3. 3 Mongoose, that, that, that counts. Vanadium Fearless can get bumped up a star level to match with our Resonator for some 3s. And so, like, basically because of Star Changer, like... We can play Giga Brilliance. He's still not that good a play, but it is viable. It will help things. Uh, it is a permanent 300 point boost when you use his effect. And when you're talking about cards like this is Starfrost, that the larger they get, the larger they keep getting. This, it's not your major play. It's not the play you're going to go to, but it's a play. And honestly, there was nothing else in the extra deck that really needed increased. This allowed you to play two copies of everything except the one that had the least amount of plays. And even he's viable right now. So this is the deck. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, that is the end of the two-player starter set. I'm going to go put this fourth one up on my shelf. And uh, honestly... I want to thank you guys for tuning in all week, letting me take a break from Speed Duel. We're going to get right back to it. Um, I got a cool challenge that I think I'm just about ready to crack. And uh, so we're going to have like a pseudo deck out deck for Speed Duel. Should be kind of fun. I got a couple older requests I'm still trying to uh, get to. If you guys have any requests, let me know. Uh, I'm starting to research into Edison formats as that keeps being an email question. And you know what? If you guys enjoy it, I'll do it. Um, I still have yet to fully construct my deck for domain format, which is another wonderful format that's out there for you casual players. So for right now, I got to get back to work. You guys do the things. Choose not to do the things. Do, do one thing, okay? Go out. Enjoy your day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I promise we're going to be back with some more content. Um, I just want you guys to take care of yourselves and do well, okay? Be well until I get to see you again. Later.